Well, hi, guys. It's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. And yes, I do know that it's a little bit late. Uh, it's 530 my time here in uh, Tennessee. Uh, I've just been busy taking care of some personal things. Uh, in fact, I've been really, really busy the last month or so. Uh, so. But during that time, because I was in Texas doing some teachings, I started uploading my old series from 2016 on the book of Job. And it's about a three-week series. Uh, now, I've added in two teachings that I've done live on this, and today will be my third one to interject into that series. I want to stop and say this, okay? I have done an in-depth word study on Job, okay? And what I find is when people want to tell me what the book of Job says, they've never done anything. They've not even read the entire book. They've not even read Job. They are repeating to me what someone in a pulpit said to them. And, and, I, and I love to say, oh, see, it's right here in Scripture. It's right here in Scripture. It says it, right? That's what it says. Actually, you know what, guys? When we have something in front of us that makes God look like the bad guy, we need to check behind the translator or translators, plural, and find out what the real Greek or Hebrew word is in that sentence to make sure that we're not reading through the lenses of the person that translated. Because all translators will translate from another language, okay, the words into English from their viewpoint, their belief system, and get this, and their theology. Okay, so what's the Bible teacher telling you? When they translated the King James Bible, they chose the word considered in Scripture, have you considered my servant Job, and that's in Job chapter 1, verse 8. And it sounds like God, of all things, oh my goodness, God himself, is got jo he's got Job like this, and he's dangling him in front of Satan going, hey, have you noticed this boy right here? See the good one right here? I want you to go out and wreak havoc in his life. Okay. This came from translators who believe that in this sovereignty of God, God is in control of all things, and God has a purpose for everything in our lives, and he puts bad stuff on us and sickness on us. And watch, their theology and their belief system was put into Scripture. They, they translated the Hebrew words through their theology, and now here we are repeating the same garbage, disparaging God's good character. God did not dangle Job in front of Satan. Should I say that again? God did not offer up Job on a silver platter and say, here, go after him. He's a good guy, but go destroy him. God did not do that, guys. This is a mistranslation, and unfortunately, the guys that translated the King James Bible, and it's the error has just been copied over and over again, right? Uh, and so now what we're reading is not accurate. Did you know uh, the only times that this word, and it's spelled L-E-B, leb, and it's number 3820 in the, in the Hebrew, and it's used 598 times, 598 times in the Old Testament. 20 times this word is used in the book of Job. But watch this. There's only two times that it has been translated considered. And it was, cons it was translated considered two times in the book of Job where it says, have you considered my servant Job? He says it two times. And that is not what God was saying to Satan. What God said, have you got your heart set against my servant Job? And it's all the other times that it's translated, all 598 times has something to do with someone's heart being set on something. And sometimes it's used in a positive way because it'll say things like God had his heart set toward man in a good way, like we were special to him. But then the, just this two times in Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, and that's in Job 1, 8 and Job 2, verse 3, and it says... Uh, considered. But this is what the literal Hebrew says. It says, have you set your heart against or upon my servant Job? So God was not uh, offering Job over to Satan. He wasn't dangling him like a carrot, okay? God was confronting Satan. I want to read this to you, and this is a great translation. 
This is the Young's Literal Translations. Y-L-T, Young's Literal Translation. And it says, and, and then I'm in verse 8 here in Job chapter 1. It says, And Jehovah said unto the adversary, which is more accurate than the word Satan, by the way, Have you set your heart against my servant Job? Now watch, and God's going to say why he's asking Satan this. Have you set your heart against my servant Job? Because there's none like him in the land. He's a perfect man, upright, he fears God, and he turns away from evil. So watch what God is saying to him. Have you turned, have you set your sights on my servant Job because you have noticed that there is none like him as dedicated to me that follows me in the land? God is saying, I know that you've set your heart against my servant Job and you've been stalking him, and the reason you have, because... He is an upright, good man. He's better than any man in the earth. And that's why you've been stalking him and you got your heart set against him. Now, this is what the adversary says to God. He says, have, have, does Job not fear you for anything? Question mark. Have you not built a hedge around him? Now, see, he's, confu he's, he's actually trying to tempt and turn God against Job. Watch, it's like, if a friend of yours, okay, y'all are really, really tight, and somebody in the office that you work with or someone else comes and says, oh, oh, you think that your friend Susie is so dedicated to you and that she would walk through hell for you? Oh, well, let me explain something to you. You're confused about who Susie really is. That's what Satan was saying to God. He was confronting God and saying, oh, you think your boy Job loves you so much? And this is what he's doing. He's trying to tempt God watch, to turn against Job and make God stretch out his own hand and destroy Job. And God will not destroy Job. Notice this in Scripture. God does not say, okay, I'll test Job and I will stretch my hand out and I'll put all this junk on him and we'll see who's right and who's wrong. God did not do that, guys. God stood up for Job and he would not Turn against Job, okay? Now, here's what I want you to see. It says that and Satan is accusing God. The adversary is accusing God that, number one, that Job does not love him like God thinks he does. And then he accuses God of blessing things for Job and building a hedge around Job. God never said this. God didn't say he built a hedge. Satan is trying to turn God against Job. Okay. Now, here's what I want to go to next, okay? And uh, I want to keep reading. It says, The works of his hands you have blessed, and his substance has spread in the land. But yet, put forth, I beg you, I pray that you will. And Satan's not praying to him. That's why I said beg. Satan said, I beg you, I challenge you, is a good word. I challenge you now. Go ahead and stretch forth your hand and strike against him and see if he will not curse you to your own face. So see, he's trying to pit God against Job like people do when they're trying to stab each other in the back, okay? That's where, that's a, an attribute of Satan, by the way, is when you're going, or someone is going behind someone's back, backbiting, we call it backbiting. Satan was backbiting Job to God, trying to get God to turn his back on Job, okay? And to even test Job to see if Job really loved him. So let me read verse 12 now. And Job said, to, and Jehovah, God, said to the adversary, Lo, or behold, all things that he has is in your hand and in your power, but do not put forth your hand on Job himself. And then the adversary went forth out of the presence of Jehovah. Now, I got to explain this last verse to you. God was not saying, oh, I'm not going to destroy him, but here's my permission for you to go destroy him yourself instead. Guys, that's not what that's saying. It is not saying that God gave Satan permission. What it is saying, watch this, God is saying all of what Job has is already 
under your power, not my power. Okay, now I know all this religious teaching that we have had stuck in us, all that stinking thinking in our heads comes through a theology of God being in control of all things and nothing can happen without God's permission. You do not have a scripture that says that nothing moves in the earth without God's permission. That is not true, okay? Adam went and ate from the tree all on his own. God told him, it is not my will and is not what I want is for you to eat from that tree. You stay far, far away from it. Do not eat from it. God was clear about what he wanted and what his will was. And what we see next in the Bible, okay, guys, is that Adam went and did what he wanted to. Adam did not get permission from God to eat off of that tree. He did it on his own free will. Right here in verse 12, what's going on here is God is making a statement of, no, I'm not turning my hand against Job to destroy him, but what is in the earth is under your power. Job and all of the things that he owns, his things are in your power because Adam gave them to you in the garden. Okay, this is so primary, guys. We don't understand this. God was not, look, Satan was coming into the throne room with Job on his mind because Job is an upright man and he's jealous of Job. He's jealous of the way that Job loves God and Job does everything that he knows to uh, make God and him be at peace. And he's also, he thinks so much of God that he's constantly making sure that he's walking uprightly and living the kind of life that God wants us all to live. And Satan is so jealous of this upright He's perfect. He's better than any other man in the earth. God himself said that. Okay, so God is not dangling uh, Job in front of Satan. Satan comes in with, with Job on his heart, wanting to turn God against him, the accuser, and make God destroy Job. And God is not going to destroy Job. And God has to be honest and trustworthy, faithful, honest, forthright, and he has to clear things up with uh, Satan and say, look, Job is not in my hands. The things that he owns is not in my hand. That's in your hands. And so Satan leaves and he goes out into the earth and he starts wreaking habit, havoc on Job. Okay, guys? Well, listen, I've done a long teaching today, but there's one more thing I want to say to you. In verse 12, uh, in uh, the footnotes, it says, Behold means look at, take notice, observe, uh, and it's also used as just an interjection. So watch. What God said is observe and see that what is in the earth, all of what Job owns, is already in your hands, not my hands. Listen, and I, I wanted to say it one more time. God did not dangle Job to Satan. God is, that is not his nature and character. And God did not give Satan permission. Satan did not need God's permission to do evil in the earth. Adam let him in in the garden, okay? Sin and death entered through one man, not God. And that ability to go and wreak havoc on Job did not come from God. It came through mankind allowing it in the Garden of Eden. Guys, I'm going to sign off. I love you, and I'll see you here again. Bye-bye.